Sylvia Sims, welcome to the podcast on jasonsolomons.com. Absolute pleasure to have you. An absolute uh, joy to welcome you for uh, Espresso Bongo, one of my favourite ever Youthquake movies, now reissued on the, the BFI Flipside label. <laughs> what a joy to be to be reminded of Soho and, and your youth. What, what do you feel when you watch it, when well, you look very, back? Because Soho has changed so completely. It's now got posh flats. Yeah. Not scrubby little flats up and loads of saying... There's a lady here who'll help you with your problems. <laughs> or would you like a massage? None of those. It's quite different now. It's a sort of respectable part of it. It is, but yeah. It was pretty it was pretty sordid in some ways then. But it was also funny. I mean, once when we were filming all night, somebody came out and spoke to the assistant director and said, They've got to go, they've got to go. Because the ladies say they can't get to sleep. <laughs> they need their beauty sleep. It's true. When, when no, you no, look... no, you don't. They were never asleep. <laughs> yeah, I realised that. The I, I love that the atmosphere that the our guest has kind of created yeah. for the movie and that, that it depicts the, the whole espresso circuit, mm. this kind of coffee bar circuit where people went to kind of play their play their their dreams out. Yeah, as their well. dreams out, their music and everything. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess your character was like that as well. She's a, a show yes. girl trying to trying to be, kind of make it big in a way, trying well, to kind of. <laughs> Or as big She's as she pretty could. thick, really. Um, <laughs> and uh, she adores the agent, played by Larry Harvey. But she's um, she's a st- stupid girl. She does a bit of... Stri- she doesn't strip completely. Mm. She's a soubrette in the strip show. Yes. It's very important that you remember that. So she's fairly open down the front, but... She is the soubrette, and she would like to get her voice better. Yeah, exactly. And, and she's pretty dim, because she obviously thinks that you can learn how to be Judy Garland. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she has a. You give her anyway. Uh, there's a soulfulness to her. There's a. There's an anger to her. I mean, as much as you can, because Lawrence Harvey's character. I mean, he kind of doesn't stop talking. He's full of energy. Yeah. He's smooth talks her yeah. into into different corners. But she does get her moments of, of wisdom. Oh, yes. I mean, they have that row when they're both in bed. Yes, certainly. But it's quite childish. Mm. And I wanted to keep her not too, not sophisticated. I don't think she really knows what's t- too much what's going on. Mm. I think she's nice and dim. <laughs> Walking Cartier's and touch every stone. You wouldn't stroke a Mayfair mink that wasn't your own. Which means unless you're serious, just leave the loot alone. You can look at the goods, but don't touch them. You can value the stocks, but don't touch them. All the stocks are in frock, just don't touch them. You can't walk in the Dorchester Savoy or the Ritz And open up their showcases to handle the fits Which means until you own the goods, don't touch the exit bit You can hover like an eagle But until you make it legal You can look at the goods, but don't touch them That they, I mean, because you watch it now and you think, well, as a fem- you know, if you were remaking that sort of thing, you'd kind of give the female character a bit more, or one would hope that the, the female character would get a bit more. I mean, throughout your career, have you been able to to kind of bring that intelligence to your female character? We were making a film about that period, and it wasn't the same. Mm. I mean, I, I I made all those movies, but I still thought it was important that I when I went home, I had to have the meal on the table for my husband, now my ex-husband, and did all those domestic things. Right. It's extraordinary that I should think that was so important. But I did. And if I didn't do it as well as, say, my sister, who didn't do as much work as I did, I just sort of... It's just how we were. Mm. We hadn't quite got into the full feminist thing. It was on the cusp. It was coming. But we hadn't quite moved into that. Yeah. And so there was always this guilt feeling. 
well, I'm working, so I must kind of pay for that pleasure. But even if you, you know, you were you were on stage shaking your thing in a way, shaking your tassels, being gorgeous, being in, in you know, legendary films, Ice Cold in Alex, for example, you're a, a, a huge star. You still felt the need to, to kind of conform and be a good, good girl. Yes, and I also have to tell you, a public may not believe this, but it's absolutely true. I never thought I was a big star. I never even, to tell you the truth, I didn't even know I was beautiful. Mm. It was something you didn't, I thought that some of the girls that, who were under contract who, with rank, for instance, who looked after themselves far better than I did. I mean, they had their hair done regularly, they had their faces look, I mean, I just didn't do any of that. Mm. I was more concerned about where the tomatoes coming up in the garden. <laughs> it's just how I was. Yeah. Um, it's, in a way, I'm rather sad that I didn't know how gorgeous I was. Uh, do, I mean, now you look back at Espresso Bongo, for example, which has you in, <laughs> in your full gorgeousness. <laughs> Were you surprised? I mean... I was rather surprised. It was very, you're very sexy in it, may I say. <laughs> not that you're not now, to be honest. But. I think I probably... I think I might have played around. I don't know whether I'd have played around a bit more. All I know is I certainly had better... I needn't have stayed in that marriage, but there we are. It's very sad. But I thought when you got married in a church, mm. you got married in a church, and it would have been a bit of a scandal to get divorced. I, it's, I do not believe that this forceful woman who is talking to you now mm. is the same person that I was was those years ago but I was like that as dim as a tock H lamp I used to say <laughs> the uh, I think that a lot changed when we began to think that maybe it wasn't bad to be intelligent and work hard yeah. and so on I always think that Sheila Hancock got the message earlier than I did she was very bright about it all and yet she was domesticated as well, right? I mean, there were, I mean, there were a few. I mean, I suppose Joan Collins was round about the similar time doing similar yes. roles. Then obviously went off to Hollywood and mixed yes. with Paul Newman and James Dean. Yeah. Was that never something that you were going to do? Well, um, it was discussed because at one time uh, I was offered a contract with 20th Century Fox, but you see, this is where my timidness came into mm. it. I didn't think I'd. I would be too frightened to be on my own in America, so I stayed. I, I, we'd had the war. You have to understand, we're the, we're the generation who, frankly, had lived enough by the time we were 11. <laughs> You've got to understand. Yeah. We were the evacuees. My mother was dead. Uh, it, it's it, When you think what you just faced when you were a little kid... I don't think my generation can even... You know, comprehend that. To be honest, it was with you. extraordinary. So you, you didn't. Some people became adventurous, but I swear to you, there was a lot of desire to be back and having a settled home. Mm. So there you are. I was always political, mm -hmm. and um, you still are. Vaguely, yeah, not as much as I used to be, but I am vaguely. But I mean, I just think we did want to do better for the world. It's so difficult to explain. No, I get that. I get the feeling it does come across. In, it comes across in, in certain of the movies at the time. I think Espresso Bongo has that. It captures that. Uh, 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 it's on the cusp of this youthful energy. Yes. It's not quite rebellious. Although I think people at the time probably thought Espresso Bongo yeah. was a rebellion yeah, movie, a yeah. teenage rebellion movie. Yeah. But it isn't looking back now. But there is an energy to it, a, a will to succeed, a will to kind of break down some A will some to barriers. be different. Yes. Like the boy wants to be different. Within within his family, but yeah, I mean the Cliff Richards character wants Cliff to you know Richard, break yes. out of that kind of yes, terrible right. kind of harrowed and mother and yeah. and useless drunk father yeah. that he wants to escape from that sort of this realm of social realism that creeps That's into right. this musical that you've made here, which I think is very very interesting to see Cliff Richard kind of being that symbol as well. He was just so adorable. <laughs> you can't imagine. He really was. How can you? You know, sometimes as you get old, you know, the child of somebody you meet, you suddenly want to go, oh, because they're gorgeous. Mm. Well, Cliff was like that. Was it, I mean, was he at that stage already when you were making this film? Was it Screaming Girls coming on set? Was he? A, oh, was yeah, he they a... knew him mm. very much, but he wasn't, qu he wasn't quite 
going mad with the screaming girls outside, but certainly he was known by them, mm. yes. I think mentioned Lawrence Harvey was pretty well known by that stage oh, as well. Oh, Larry Harvey. He died so young, it was cancer, you know. Yeah, he was terrific in this oh, film. wonderful, wonderful. Couldn't wonderful. shut him up. <laughs> he gets but wasn't that wonderful? He'd got that dialogue, so because he was Lithuanian or Estonian or whatever, and uh, everyone, everyone said to him when he was working at Strap, oh, you'll never get very far because you were... Well, of course he did. How oh, he was wonderful. I mean, the, the kind of Yiddishness yeah. of this film, which yeah. kind of hearts me. It reminds me of my, you know, my grandfather was slightly in the music yeah. industry and it probably in Soho at that time. And the, the characters Larry played did with that. a lot of big, big movies. Well, then he went on to Mach- Manchurian yeah. Candidate, which is still yeah. like an, you know, an absolutely kind of The classic. one they remade isn't it? Isn't anything like no, as good near as the it. original. No, we're near it. Because it had real suspense. Mm. The original. No, he was adorable. Absolutely adorable. Hey, it, it reminds me, because in the Manchurian Candidate, key words happen and then it reawakens you know, the, right, the, the, yeah. the assassin in him. But yeah. Espresso Bongo is one of those movies. You hear, you hear it strains, you hear the, the, the froth of coffee and it, it sort of brings back to life. <laughs> kind of, uh, It's redolent of a past era that we still have so much respect for and so much to thank for as well because it, it influences how society is now. I mean, you say so has disappeared, but it wouldn't be where it is now. We, we're all drinking coffee again like mad. No. And I, men, look, you know, I think coffee went into abeyance in the 70s. Now it's back. You know, you can't, you can't move for coffee. And I think it was the espresso circuit from the 50s must have yeah. been like that too. All jacked up on coffee and jittering away. Yes, that's right. <laughs> well, um, I must say, he kept charge of it very much, the director. Val Guest. Val really yes. did. He was absolutely determined it was going to go the way he wanted it to go. Yes, he made one of my favourite films in, in The Day That the Earth Caught Fire. Uh, as well. Oh, that's with Leo right. McCurt. Wasn't that a good oh, thriller? Terri- I don't really like sci fi. That's my, almost my favourite sci fi. It was a very good thriller yeah. then. So I think that sort of British filmmaking, I think it's something we can be very proud of. I'm, I'm delighted the BFI are reissuing it on this, this flip side label. And I'm delighted to see you again in, um, in, in all your glory, Sylvia <laughs> Sims. <laughs> Uh, how do you feel when you look at your, your your younger self like that? I must think that's one of the, the oddest things for any actress because we all got photographs at home and we see ourselves as you, but to see yourself playing, to see yourself so lively and vibrant and, and, and sexual. I do get sent... I have a lot of fan mail still because <laughs> they're always showing films in Lithuania and Azerbaijan and Germany. I mean, it's extraordinary. And they're nearly always pictures from Espresso Bongo. So I very sweetly put a nice picture in of me as an old lady. <laughs> That'll sober them up. <laughs> and say, I'm so sorry I don't look like that anymore, but I have signed the photo. <laughs> that is the beauty of the movies, is that you do, you know, somewhere, somewhere, uh, and now constantly in the reissue, you will be looking like that on many more screens well, around, which is a But it was joy. black and white, of course. It's a pity it's not in colour. Well, it looks... But the new... This restoration that they do, you know, they spruce them up, and they look... I mean, yeah. it does look wonderful. Like, the last time I saw it, it was all crackly and a terrible old print. No, I know. Now it's it marvellous what they've done. it shiny and new. And, yeah. And listening like the Soho night, I imagine. So... I, I quite like isn't the, the it photography funny that. that song he sings, the boy, the the, the Cliff Richard boy, song, the Cliff Richard. yeah, the the Madonna on the second the, floor, yes, oh, shrine God. on the second floor, yeah, the amazing, shrine on the second floor. <laughs> oh. You sing yourself not so bad as well, if I may say. In in in, in I don't this think film. it was all me though. I think it was somebody, <laughs> it, it, somebody else helped with the high notes. Well, I'm sure. If they could do it in singing in the rain, they could do it in espresso bongo. <laughs> Why not? Sylvia, so it's an absolute pleasure to see you again. Congratulations on on espresso bongo. I know I'm doing it like thank 50 you, years too you. late, but uh, uh, and 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 still being a, a fantastic and vital uh, part of uh, the British film establishment. Now you were a rebel in espresso bongo. Now you're establishment. I'm establishment. Yeah, you're the queen. I'm mom. an ob. <laughs> yes, you're an ob. And your queen mum. I don't know how much more you could get. Uh, wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you.